We just, I just, we wanted to make sure, I, I wanted to, we, we wanted to make sure that we're not repeating. Okay, we're wanting to use your experience on California um, to kind of, you know, we thought we were doing a good job. Let's just start with that. Let's start with, we thought we were doing a good job. Ohio thought they were going to want to try to stand like right now, like in a minute. Okay. Oh yeah. I heard, um, a, they have a visitor, a court. I don't know if he's coordinator or county coordinator, but he's on the coordinator trainings and he's like, we are right there. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> go Ohio. <laughs> yeah. They're not. So they thought, and then they're learning from California that they have not even done so many things like, so, and isn't this amazing? Seven years, seven years and seven years in seven years, nobody has gotten this far. So congratulations. Anybody who Thank has you. for you, like tell them kiss your grits because has, <laughs> nobody has gotten that far. I mean, supposedly Washington is the greatest. It's the greatest state. Where, why aren't they fully seated? How is somebody teaching somebody when they're not fully seated? Anyway, we're not here to talk about people because we don't care. We care about the children and we care about the future and we care about the sanction and we care about, I mean, literally this is all we care about. So one of my biggest questions for you is I heard, and I don't know anything about what really happened about this, but I heard that you wrote all your handbooks for all the committees or, no. okay. No, I didn't do any of that. So I, I want to give credit where it's due. So we had, um, at, so at the end of 2022, we were down to one coordinator, me. So and then we, the general assembly decided that they were going to take a holiday break from general assembly meetings and like official business. I saw that as an opportunity to mop up, clean up. Um, and actually I scheduled the mop and bu the first mop and bucket Saturday, not knowing that on that same day, I was going to get word that I was the only coordinator left. Okay. So I was like, ah, well, what a fitting day to have a first mop and bucket clean up the mess meeting. Uh, it was kind of like deer in headlights time, right? It's like, okay, all right, going with the flow. That's what I always, I, I know that whatever God throws my way is for my own edification and for reasons that he knows that I don't know yet. Right. So I just went with it. Okay, guys, let's figure out how to deal with our messes. And out of, um, it was either that mop and bucket or soon thereafter, one of our uh, very dedicated assembly members decided she was like, wait a minute, you know, so if I'm hearing you correctly, we're the ones that are supposed to like raise our hand and like do stuff. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly right. So in that moment, it was like light bulb moment. So she said, well, okay, then, you know, I'm. I'm paraphrasing, but it was like, the idea was, okay, well then I'm going to just raise my hand and start an elections committee. Who wants to work on elections, uh, an elections procedure protocol? We need to, we need like a manual on how to do elections. So she studied up in the journal assembly handbook, who's eligible to work on that, work on elections. And it was the, um, um, it had to be all state citizens. And it had to be, uh, um, I don't know if it had to be qualified jurors off the top of my head. I'm kind of forgetting right now, but she read up on it, formed a committee, scheduled dates out into the future. Like the next X number of weeks, we're all going to meet. We're going to flesh this out. We're going to figure out how to hold an election. And so she did that. And with the, she announced it to the general assembly that that's what she was going to do. She had the support of all of these people that said, I want to do that. I want to work on that. And it was like, wow, suddenly there just became this, like an invigoration that happened because she declared it. She just said, I'm doing this. And it was like, this is amazing. And so because of her dedication and her 
clarity and her no nonsense ability to um, just keep that ball moving forward down the field. Other people felt, it seemed like they felt inspired. I can't speak for them, but based on their actions, they sur- they sure seemed inspired. People wanted to start volunteering and I could, I could fill in for that and I know how to do that. And next thing you know, there was just this like, it was just happening. It was like assembling itself. It was amazing, right? And so all credit goes to every single one of them that felt that call inside of them to start working, rolling up the sleeves. And suddenly the assembly became a priority for them and they were all working together. And it was amazing to watch this. And I felt, um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like a, like a mama hen, you know what I'm saying? Cause I have to stay in my own box, right? As a coordinator, I have limited, I have, I have a like limited, um, uh, you, you don't actually have any, um, power. You're just, you're just literally orchestrating and you have no power. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it must be frustrating. I don't know. Well, it is. At, and at the same time, it's also a gift because it's like, I have to step in if I'm seeing unlawfulness. It's like, I carry this, you know, I've got to make sure that with what they're doing or planning to do, isn't going to put themselves into harm's way or put the future into harm's way. Because right, order, right Michelle, there's a what? There's an order. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, the reason I'm asking you this is because, and I, I actually wrote this down. I, we were making a bunch of notes. And um, one of the things that I feel that we experience is, you know, everybody's like, oh, we're self-governing. We're self-governing. And I think that some people feel that that means that either A, they get to make up their own government. Oh, right. That's you know, a very popular belief. <laughs> they're just making up their own new government or they believe that we're sovereign. We can do whatever we want. Right. I'm sovereign. And so um, I actually wrote this down because I felt like this is an important thing. We are to reconstruct the government. Correct. We are not to recreate no. the government. We are to reconstruct, which Correct. means that we don't have any margin to override the ancient law. Right. You know, the structure. And I think any time that any of us are falling apart, the reason California failed was because there was something that was not 100% um, and there was a mistake. And so maybe, or something that was missed or maybe a hole or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, gotta make sure we hit it the right way. Right. And, and so it's interesting because what, literally so far, everybody has been told there's a blueprint and so there's folks that are trying to research this blueprint Mm -hmm. and I'm like of the mind that you know hey somebody's got to know this blueprint it's got to be a little cleaner than all of this Mm -hmm. and it's got there's got to be I I know that there you know like Anna says well on your state you can do you can decide certain things I don't know that there's that much we can decide I think first we have to reconstruct and then after we reconstruct it, after some time, we can reassess and then we can start making changes. But first we have to get back to where we were. 100%. Is what you were told yep. is you've already been through the fire. And it's the reason that I wanted to talk with you about it because look, I don't know a lot of things, Michelle, but what I know is if I'm trying to go for something and then you got to take the test before I got to take the test, I just want to be like, girl, what was the test like? Because I know you didn't pass the (laughs) test, but like, is this on the test? Is this on the test? (laughs) You know, then we can make sure because I feel confident 
and I have no evidence of this. So I'm asking you the question, okay? But I feel confident that we have to follow like an actual order to the T. And then after we have practiced that, because the government actually has a structure. It's not it like whatever I decide. In North Carolina, we're going to do whatever I want on North Carolina. It's going to be like this. Yeah. And I don't think it's that way. I think there's an ancient order that has to be honored in a in very specific way. And this is the moment where I find it frustrating that we aren't just given a handbook. Like this is the reconstruction. Yeah. But you know what? It's what I've come to recognize is it's not a checklist. Okay. okay. I don't know what's on the test, girl. What's on the test? <laughs> give me the cliff notes. Give me the, give me the, give me I the mean, notes. Is there, a, is there an outline, you know, something? And like, where is the margin for North Carolinianism? Like, you know, where we could just put on our little North Carolina touch. I don't know that there's, there's room for that, but I'm asking, I don't know that there's a margin for that. Okay. But maybe there is. So what's on the test? Okay. So the bottom line is, okay, what we're talking about is actually very, it, you're raising really, really, really good points, very fruitful. You know, there's fruit that's going to come out of this really good fruit. So the, we were talking first about the, um, that this is a restoration, right? We're not remodeling. We're not renovating. We're not redecorating. We're not, there's no, nothing like that. Okay. We are in a restoration and Anna did write that amazing article about the difference between restorers and reformers, okay? Anyone who comes here wanting what we've got to offer first has to know we are not reforming anything. We are here to reconstruct, restore our original land jurisdiction, soil jurisdiction. And because we have, we have co-contemporaneous or concurrent general jurisdiction, in terms of our authority, okay, we're not reconstructing the air jurisdiction, we're not reconstructing the sea jurisdiction, but we still have co-contemporaneous general jurisdiction overall, all of the jurisdictions, right? Meaning we have authority in our in the in the courts that are going to be dealing with multi-jurisdictional issues, right? But we are we are restoring. So first and foremost, people get to choose to surrender to that. That right there is probably the number one most, the, the biggest challenge that we face because people correct their status and then they're like, yippee, I'm free. Yeah, I'm on the land, right? Now what? Now what do I do? And then they learn that they get to participate in this great restoration project, but yet they're bringing with them, and, and I'm guilty of this. When I first corrected my status, what did I bring with me? I brought with me activism, post-traumatic stress, okay? Thinking that I was going to fix that system over here. Now, that could happen later down the road when we're fully stood. We can nullify bad laws. We can do the remand process, right? But we can't do any of that without first setting up a functional system based on the restoration, not based on our own understanding. Okay, so this is the other thing, is not based on our own understanding. Okay, so having learned that um, was, a, for me, a massive, massive um, revelation, I guess is the right word. Because I thought, oh, good, I get to bring all my great ideas, right? Me and my big ideas, you know, Mamby, right? Me and my big ideas. In short order, I realized, wait a minute, I've got it wrong. I discovered that because of reading Anna's articles. You know, otherwise I was here to contribute my way. This is how I think we should do it. Now, when you bring a bunch of people together that have suffered because of the de facto system or 
uh, the dumbing down process, the chemical exposure, the, you know, health challenges, you name it, the political nightmare, all of it. When you get a bunch of people together that have that kind of pain going on all at the same time, there's only so long that it's harmonious before it becomes like he said, she said, gossip, backbiting, triggering. It's all the, it's all the psychological warfare triggering that's happening. Hundred, totally. Yes. I agree with that. Professional psychological term for brainwashing and mind control is triggers. And, and the other part of that is we have been programmed to, um, implode. We've been programmed to implode. We're not supposed to be able to get organized because then the controllers would lose control. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have been programmed to implode. I yield. (laughs) Yeah. It's like the death and destruction of the California assembly. It's like this, the, the, um, People have also grown up with a competition mindset, right? We've seen it in sports. We've learned it all through school, you know, everything from spelling bees to football and everywhere in between, you know, we've been, it's about this competitive thing and I'm not against competition, it's healthy just- competition, you know, yeah. but it does something to our minds when we bring competition into a, the realm of being a self-governing body. But what we forget is the key word, which is body. We're all one body. Yeah. We have to cooperate. We can't compete. Right. If everybody wants to be the brain, (laughs) well, then who's going to get to be the ear? Who's going to get to be the eyes? Who's going to get to be the mouth and the nose and the kidneys and the toes and the fingernails? Like who, who gets that job, those jobs. And then what happens is there's another layer of, of this competitive thing is people go, you know, I work so much harder than you. You just get to sit around. Right. I've seen that happen where people will point blame and go, you're not working hard enough. This is again, the programming is the blame game. So they've made everybody into blamers and right. We have to recognize this in ourselves and just stop. Yeah. Like who's the bigger victim here? Oh, I'm a, I'm a big victim. I'm a big victim. And it's all Michelle Ford's fault. Right. So the reason it, I think, I believe the reason it comes out that way, even though I admittedly, you even said it at the top of the call, I actually have no authority. Okay. (laughs) But yet I get the blame frequently for wielding some sort of a sword. Being the coordinator, you're just. I mean, I, I, I'm a liaison. I'm a bridge between the Federation and the state, making sure that the state doesn't set themselves up for failure. And and then ironically it implodes, but the it's, I use this analogy about the Federation because a lot of people think that the Federation is the federal government or some branch of the federal government, which they're not, we're not right. All the States collectively ultimately will be the Federation and the Confederation, the business side. Right. So um, I'm like a, I'm like the, the weakest part, the, the, the first line of defense at the kids bowling alley, you know, the, when the, you know, they put up the bumper guards, you probably heard this analogy. Really the Federation is that, but because I'm a bridge to the Federation, I am the mouthpiece that speaks of the warning Ah, the ball is headed towards the gutters, you know, alert, alert, you know, we're going to bump off the side and ricochet and get, you know, it might be an overcorrection. Okay. I sense an overcorrection coming. Okay. Oh, what are you, a mind reader? No, of course not. I don't agree with Sue saying I'm not doing anything like that. However, I've been around long enough to see how this goes. And so, you know, there's resistance for whatever reason. And I believe it is all the stuff we just talked about. Lack of surrender to the restoration process, you know, that it is a restoration first and foremost. Another issue is the, where our laws come from. Our land-based laws come from the good book 
took me a long time to surrender to that too. It was like, um, st stepping back and staying in my own lane and, and wanting to empower people to their own, you know, greatness. What do they want to contribute? What do their skills and talents have to do with what we need to get done? How can we how can we all benefit? Because someone knows how to write a manual for crying out loud. I mean, that's amazing. I don't know how to write a manual. <laughs> okay. Self-admittedly, I'm like, that's, that's not my skill. Um, but everyone gets to be, you know, bring their strengths. You know, we've been brought up in this society where we learn what our flaws are or our weaknesses. And then there's all this emphasis on that fix the weakness diminished. instead of constantly diminished and right. praised. And so we need to teach people how they don't know, you know what, Michelle, they've never experienced anything but fear and diminishment. They don't know what love and praise would do. They don't mm -hmm. know if you just love and praise instead of fear monger and diminish. Mm -hmm. And it is a big switch. You know, it's kind of like when you're trying to heal your gut and you're a sugar burner and you need to be a fat burner. And so you have to switch gears. It's not easy because that sugar is an addiction. That dopamine hit is legit. And Anna just wrote an article about the dopamine hit that her mom used to take when she was talking about oh, you know, yeah. having to basically, it's, it's a reparenting of yourself. She and I had a long talk about that too, because I had to go through that for myself mm. because we, my mother had been abused by my dad. We watched it and I didn't want it to go down to our kids and my sister didn't either. And we were both kind of shook up by all of that, you know? And so we wanted to stop it immediately. We didn't want it to go down to the next generation. So That's I, awesome. I, I really just appreciated her article that she wrote because I 100% can get with that. And I'm really proud to be able to say that my sister did a, a lot of hard work and me too. And we were very fortunate that our husbands are saints. Yeah. <laughs> that they're, helps. They're saints. They put up with a lot of crap from us because of, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they literally saved us, you know, like both of them did in their own different ways. Anyway, I'm sorry. I made it about me. No, that's awesome. No, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about praise and love and not the diminishment. I'm loving this. Go ahead. I'm, I, I yield. Yeah. So um, I know I have seen with my own eyes that when people do feel appreciated for their work. <laughs> oh boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> God bless you. Snuck up on me. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. When people so feel, we were, when people you were feel appreciated. You when you were talking about being the bumper guards for the federation, the federation is the confederation is the business side lacking the surrender. I love how you're saying that, that they are lacking the surrender because we're done surrendering. I think that's, but I don't think we were ever given a choice to surrender. I don't think we were being able to surrender. We were had a boot, having a boot on your neck and surrendering to love and praise is two different things. Oh, totally different things. And, and I don't mean surrender to an actual, I don't mean surrender to an authority. Uh, you know, I don't mean that. What I'm saying is surrender to this process that as a team, I mean, it, not that we're mechanical, but this idea of, you know, sprockets, you know, they need one another to be able to keep turning. You know what I mean? And that's, it's like, there's analogies all over the place that can be used to describe when people work together as a team and appreciate from, I mean, from the one who, who, you know, the takes cream. out the, takes out the trash to the one that builds empires. I mean, there's, there's room for everybody. We need but the mop and bucket, girl. We need the mop and bucket. We need the mop and bucket. And so, although I am so, um, I'm done crying over the loss of the people that have stepped down. I did cry, by the way. It I can't imagine how hard 
you know, there's going to be a lot of people on our assembly that are going to really be mad. They're going to be really mad that they were kind of led into a situation that was misguided. But just like you had no way to know what was going to be on the test, you yeah. know, nobody really knows what's on the test. And we, we have to just be, be able to give ourselves grace to say, oh my gosh, we got to go back and read that book again. Because mm -hmm. we didn't obviously do very well on the test. Right. And we have to start all over again. And it's going to kind of suck. But, you know, how many of us have been in school or in, in, in college and you write a thesis or you do a big project and you put your whole heart and soul in it and the teacher is just like ripping it to shreds. And, but friends, we can't risk um, missing this mark. It's ancient right. law. That's exactly right. So tell yeah. us, continue. You're talking about the framework. So surrendering to the framework, surrendering to the path. There's a lit path and we just need to trust the path. I think we've never been able to know that we should be on the path or how right. to get to the path. Right. Well, let me tell you, once you find the path that you're talking about, it's a very narrow path. It's a very narrow path. It's not the popular path. If it was, everybody would already be here. But what I have found is there's a comfortability level where people feel more aligned in the, re in reforming, right? Reforming the broken system. I can't tell you how many people still send me, you know, from our own assembly, still send me information about the Trump election coming up. And I'm like, I have, I have a recording I can share with you that might help you. Um, okay. That would be awesome because I, mean, I struggle and, going, yeah. are you reading? Are you studying Anna's articles? You know, are you tuning in? And then, you know, and then there's, and then because I ask these kinds of questions, what ends up coming back at me is, cause I must be asking the wrong questions or, or something I've, I've created a, a, a situation where when I ask people hear me as though I'm some kind of a Pharisee like a condemnation, ah, are you reading? And that's not how I am. That's not how I speak. That's not how I think. It's more like education is gonna be the key to healing this issue, this problem. But I don't want you to hear it from me. I want you to, I want you to check it out for yourself so that it's an awareness that happens. There's an awareness that happens from the studying process. Are you trying to give me more work to do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, just kidding. You're doing a great job because you inquire and you ask questions. Just the fact that you're curious tells me that you're not coming at this going, I have all the answers and we have to do it my way. No, it's you're, you are demonstrating for me and God and everybody that you have surrendered to. I don't know what I don't know. We didn't learn anything. Right. I'm like, I, what I know for sure is that we don't know anything. And you know what I love is every time I ask Anna a question, she creates more ease and flow. I yeah. will find out from her that I am 100% trying to swim upstream. <laughs> I'm just working so hard, Anna. And she's just like, girl, turn around. Right. Yeah. Just go with it. Go with it. Yeah. <laughs> It's not supposed to be a struggle. It's really not. Yeah. When there is struggle, you got to look underneath the, you know, look behind the curtain. What's going on? Why is there struggle? In fact, I'm not going to share the gory details, but it was in, I think it was in November where I reached out to um, uh, our, we have an elected justice on our assembly and I reached out and I said, I've just, I am a, I'm, a, I'm witnessing stuff that isn't, isn't jiving. Everything was going perfect. The machine was flowing. It was just like all, everything was lining up going so well. 
And then out of the blue, these little signs of like, you know, it's almost like when you don't close the window all the way and there's like a draft, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like a T-bone. Uh -oh. You can see the lights coming down the track. Mm -hmm. You got a little leaky roof going on. You got a little something, something. Is there, is there a rodent in the attic? You know, there's something going on. And so I started seeing little signs like that where, you know, the house wasn't on fire, but there was just draftiness and, you know, <laughs> little, smell. Little, little signs of trouble, right? Smell. There you go. There's a smell coming out of the kitchen that doesn't Something's belong. Turning. Something's turning. I don't know. <laughs> so when I shared, um, when I shared that I've been observing these things, um, it was, you know, being, having to sit with this, what would be the source of the troubles? So I went to the good book, trying to figure out what could possibly be, what could possibly, what could possibly be the trouble? And then I was like, I, I think I know what the trouble is. And when we have conflicts of interest that, that um, we know are, we know are happening, but perhaps had never revealed the fruit of the conflicts of interest, you know? So may I? Yeah. Yeah. I want to point out that you did not feel infiltrated. You felt there was a conflict. There's a hiccup. Maybe you hit a couple bumps. Because I, I might be very naive, Michelle. You've been doing this longer, I guess. In my experience, um, most of us are here in love. We're just liquid love. And we really just want everybody to win. And I don't, I have not experienced too many people I'm not saying no people. We've definitely had people who have really that are on purpose, like building a log jam, you know, but <laughs> they really like to collect the logs on the water and they don't realize the log jam they're creating or they do. I don't know. But what I know is usually people who stack logs up in the water aren't very bright. They don't realize. I mean, it's not the way. Mm. It isn't the way. No, the only time, the only time that there's um, a necessity for a log jam is if there's a flood, you know, there's like a, you gotta, you gotta contain the water. Okay. That's when you need to build a dam or a right. log jam. Right. Right. Or, so there's like a bad infiltrate. California has been through the ringer. <laughs> You've been robbed, cheated, you know, violated 10 different ways. Mm -hmm. but, but out of all of those people and all of the experiences that you had, you know better. You've been able to move forward in confidence well enough not to walk in that fear and in, um, in some kind of hesitation for mm -hmm. fear of constant infiltration. You haven't mentioned that once. No. And I just want to make that point because you're saying there was a snag, mm -hmm. like the lines got tied up a little bit or something. Mm -hmm. And you're going to work on straightening these lines out. I just want to clarify that versus somebody coming and cutting the lines. I see. Well, I know... I know what's at stake here for us to, you know, what it's going to mean out to, what it's going to mean to the world when we do this and we're successful. So I don't believe that we're totally impervious to the possibility of infiltrators. In fact, I'm pretty confident that there are infiltrators on every assembly. Um, but here's what I also know. I know Someone could lie to me to my face and I would not know it, but God does. God knows if someone's a liar, even if I don't. Um, and so I trust God to deal with that. 
that as long as I remain in my lane and I operate with honor and I treat people honestly and transparently, that that's the best that I can do. I can't go around imagining everyone's an infiltrator because otherwise that's um, a house that's built on sand. You're distracted and you can't do the work. You are laying right. 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 Yeah, we have to lay the solid foundation first. Yeah. Yeah, because you know what? Rain is going to come and wind is going to blow. But if you have a solid foundation, mm -hmm. you know, if, if your foundation is on, you know, is on solid ground, on solid rock, you know, then you're going to withstand the storms, but you're going to withstand them together as a team because this is the third time fourth time well okay so apparently it happened before i became part of the assembly so it happened once mm -hmm. it happened um a, a full-on split in 2021 where like anna you know after many course corrections that were um, not adhered to there was like a, a cutting off of that part of the vine okay it was like no you can't participate until you learn and then maybe you can come back in the future but not now that group went on to grow to ten thousand. Ten thousand people wow so what i'm here to tell everybody is it's not about the numbers oh okay it's not about the numbers if it was we would be back in democracy land and we would have been overtaken because of numbers mm. but it's not we have a jurisdiction well, you know, here on our own state, we have the land and we have the soil and we've got to stand up the court in both. We need both um, trial juries. We need a grand jury, right? So we have work to do to manage our own house. And so it's not about the numbers. That's why it's a narrow path. Mm. And so I'm not, I remain unfazed. Um, I mean, this might sound wild, okay? But I, I, I believe it was either a text or an email that I sent to Anna recently that I would rather build our house with five honest people. Yes. Totally trustworthy, honest people than a thousand or more, 10,000 that aren't on this page because it's not gonna matter. It's gonna keep falling over and over. But to answer your question, so it happened before, then it happened, and then it happened in 2021. And then in 2022, when the um, second coordinator quit, she used the email list to distribute pro propaganda. Oh. And then after that, we were experiencing massive troubles again, shrinking and mm. troubles. That's why I started, you know. It was like, okay, we're going to have the mop and bucket meetings. We're going to clean up our own house. We're going to do this as a team. We're going to figure this out. And then 2023 was really mostly a miraculous year until in the fall when I started, I started smelling that smell <laughs> coming out of the kitchen. So you were fall. getting into that, but can you, before you get into that, because I definitely want to know about the twisted lines, but the propaganda just define that because I think mm -hmm. I know what it means. Well, propaganda is intentional um, blurring of blurring of the truth in order to convey an opinion as though it's the fact, as though it is a fact. It's a lie. It's called lies and bullshit, right? <laughs> yes. yes, lies and bullshit. Sorry. I know, you know, I'm unfiltered over here, but just, well, I, I, I'm telling everybody the truth is the truth, but mm -hmm. like who delivered the truth or not. Right. Exactly. You know, this is such a key piece because there are people, um, who do, you know, there's like transformational growth and development work, psychological work, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what they say there's this like idea that, oh, what's true for you? No, this is leftist bullshit. Or it they is... say, oh, my truth. No. Oh, no, your no. truth. 
No. You know, so there's been this lie that has been, that has overcome our it's awareness. Immorality. That is immoral. Right. They, they're walking what they're the training, the programming. Okay. This is uh-huh. washing and programming. They want, they, the corporatocracy, the corporatocracy is brainwashing everyone into believing that morality is relative. This is a complete lie. Right. It's a total lie. Yeah. Moral, rel- it's called moral relativism. Moral relativism. Right. That uh-huh. is called lies and bullshit. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is 100% immoral. And if we do not speak out on it immediately, we believe it, we're supporting it. We are immoral. We are immoral. And order followers are immoral for that right. reason. You must speak the truth and know the truth and walk on the truth. People can hate me all day long. I don't care. That does not change the truth. Right. Okay. I love you so much. Continue. Yeah. And that's super important because that's mm-hmm. also like a, a sticking point that happens for people. Mm-hmm. They'll come up, they'll come up against something that actually goes against their personal beliefs about something. And then even if you can point out that it's actually the truth and here it is in the book, then it becomes, Oh, don't, don't talk to me about your theocracy. Don't talk to me about your religion, but it's not, a re- it's not our religion. We actually have our no, the religions that were created were created by the corporatocracy to divide and conquer basically in like 600 AD or B- B- BC or whatever it was in the beginning of time. And we don't even know what the timeline is because I think they just made that up also. But oh, they did. They actually we, did. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, they actually did. They added um, a thousand years or cut out 10,000 years or I don't really know. Like, we can't know what we don't know about that. And I, I just am like, you know what, Michelle, my feet, they face forward. And I can only just go forward. And what was it about, you know, what was it about Gamora? And then when they turn, they turn around and they turn into salt. Like, I can't even, like, it, my neck is hurting already. <laughs> I gotta go this way. Let's just go forward. But what we need to know is that they did, control us in that way and nobody wants to believe that the pope is in charge of all of this i know it's hard well because then it becomes about religion and people are either aligned with the with the pope and the catholic church and then they feel offended or they're not aligned with the pope and the catholic church and they don't want to find out that on paper they are catholic based on their birth certificate oh right and i'm indian right yeah. Did you sign up I'm to be sure. Catholic? I'm a dual. I went, well, I was, I'm not anymore. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Not everybody signed up to be Catholic. Okay. But anywhere in the world, if you've got a birth certificate, then you're part of the, you're part of that system. All roads. That's why they say all roads lead, all to, roads Rome. lead to Rome. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And those countries that said, we're not, we're not doing that. Right. We are not doing that. We are not playing that game. Guess what? Those are all the countries you're not allowed to travel to. There's only three, right? Okay. Not that many. I think right? It's- what is it? North Korea? I mean, I don't even know. I don't even I mean, know. They what- terrify people to go to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to die if you go to North Korea. That's what they, and they make movies about this, right? right. Samoa. What's the other one? I don't even know. I could look, I used to sell, um, uh, well, anyway. I used to sell travel insurance pretty regularly. Right. And so uh, there was a list of countries that they wouldn't insure you at. And I used to think, hmm. oh, that's because they're terrorists. Right. When I was, yeah. stuck, when I was stuck dangerous. in that paradigm. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's because it's too dangerous. They're not, if they go there, they might die. So they can't, but it, Doing the research that I did, I realized, oh no, there's just countries that are sovereign. <laughs> that are sovereign. They're still on the land. They never got a dot, they never got sucked into this whole system, right? Rome didn't get there, huh? Right. They turned their back and said, We're not we're, I'm sorry, we're not buying the BS you're selling. That's we're not doing it, right? So all right. So I it's not that they're terrorists. 
let's get back to the twisted lines. So the lines got crisscrossed. Yeah, so the lines got crisscrossed um, and there was a, um, like a misunderstanding or whether it was an intentional, like you brought up the, the term infiltration, whether that was an intentional thing or not, I don't know and I'm not gonna claim to know. What I am gonna claim though, is that there were things that were happening that were becoming destructive to the California assembly and doing my own public duty, I had to bring this to our, I had to bring my concerns to the people and say, I need to have clean hands by sharing the conflicts of interest that I'm seeing now that were not, they, they existed before, but there were no consequences, but there are consequences showing up now and I can't not talk about it. And that had an adverse effect on our assembly, in my opinion. But then again, nothing is by accident, right? God does his own way of cleaning house and all of that. So maybe it was the exact right thing that had to happen. Girl, you're know. walking on the truth. And I, I had to walk on the truth. <laughs> hey, I walk on the truth. And I will tell you one thing about that I know very much about the truth is the truth is belligerent. Yes. Yeah. In a colloquial sense, what they say is the truth hurts right? The truth can be painful sometimes because sometimes it, it it's convicting to our hearts. If we hear something about ourselves that stings, ouch, ooh, there might be some truth to it. And somewhere deep in there, you know that that is the truth. At some point, people can say things and it doesn't do that. And you're like, that's when your BS meter goes off. You know, like, <laughs> You're like, okay, well, there's a, there is a conditioning that has happened through the brainwashing and the mind control and which has, has pushed many people into walking in immorality. Mm -hmm. Um, and they had to turn something off in us for us to allow that immoral behavior because we're liquid right. love. And we would not normally do that. I mean, we, right. we, we, when we're born, you watch children, they care. They care big about each other. They care. They cry. They care. Mm -hmm. you know, it matters. Everything matters to them. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, the corporatocracy, let's just remember who is the bad guy here. It's the corporatocracy. They have on purpose with deliberate intention and malice, they have programmed us in a way that, you know, we're, we're, that's why it's my truth or your truth or whatever the truth. No, this is immoral lies and bullshit. And they have, they have, um, um, not commonized, um, they, uh, <laughs> normalized normalized they've normalized these things you know with really cute little memes and cartoons and commercials and television and you know and and they even made everybody just think that you know what it's just normal to maybe want to be a girl or a boy or not know who you are or be confused about anything like i you know, they, I, I had a meme that I posted, Michelle, and it's like this guy and this this girl, and they're standing in the pouring rain, and she goes, "Hey, is it raining?" And oh, I've seen that. It's like I don't know. Oh. I'm, not a, I'm not a meteorologist, and I'm just like, oh my god, like, but they literally have normalized this, you know, madness, and so that's why you know you're. You know how that they also have that saying in colloquialism, don't shoot the messenger. I mean, exactly. Michelle's like, Sometimes, I think I see something. I think I see the rain. I think it's raining. Yeah. It's like, I, like see a, I see a storm coming, everybody, you know, and then they kill the, the you know, they, they kill the, the one with the binoculars. Like, we don't want right. our rain, girl. We don't want the rain. Right. 
don't talk about the rain. Remember in the 70s, well, I don't know how old you are, but I'm a product of the 70s. And we used to have this, you know, see no evil, hear no, no evil, evil, speak no evil. So people weren't allowed to talk about the stuff, right? right. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to talk about religion. You're not allowed to talk about money. You you're not talk allowed about to it. talk what are you talking about In the 70s, we talked about it. You're remembering as we transitioned into the 80s and then they said, you know, no politics, no religion, no blah, blah, blah. But in the 70s, we still talked about it. Right. You know, my I guess my point is you weren't allowed to talk about those things being evil. Oh, yeah. Right? Because in the Don't. 70s, it was like anything goes. I mean, Everybody, you talk as a little it. kid, as a little kid, um, and everything went way over my head, right? There was Love American Style, and there was yes. like Three's Company, and like yes. the Love Boat. Yeah. And there was all this like romance and kissing on Archie TV. Bunker. Archie Bunker. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Um, and everything, anything, they could talk about anything. We all they, were in and and they, each other's homes and there was nothing in the closet. Right. It was just all out there. 80s, right. In the eighties, they tried to teach people that there's things in the closet. And I was like, I think I have been through all of their closets because we played right. you know, seek in their house. And I don't remember nothing like that in the closet. We knew the crazy right. uncle who was tied up in the basement because, <laughs> you know, but anyway. Yeah, it was like everything was going on. It was the sexual revolution, right? All my friends had parents that were divorced, you know, moms and dads that were divorced. And times were really changing. It was like after, you know, on the heels of the, hippie movement, et cetera. And it was like, no one was allowed to call out the things that were actually immoral anymore. And you weren't allowed to talk about morality or immorality. It was like, oh no, the, that's ancient yeah, history. We used to say- we That's used ancient to, history. Well, we used to, we used to, I think there was more of an acceptance. Like, okay, mom and dad would, would they not gonna like this. We can't let mom and dad know. Hmm. I think it kind of started like that. Mm, maybe it did. And then yeah. it was, well, at least this is my memory. I don't know. You know, I don't know everything, but like in my memory, it was more like a whole bunch of us were just like, okay, when moms and dads are around, we act this way. And when there's no <laughs> moms and dads around, we act this way. And, you know, as you got older, um, you just had to be two different people kind of, you know, <laughs> Mom isn't going to understand that. So, or that mom and dad are not going to get that. And, um, but I think that we were supported in school because the institutions wanted us to be brainwashed into doing the thing. And so they encouraged us to, you know, your moms and dads are busy. They're working. You should be taking care of yourself. They were like, they were actually using a lot of logic and reason to manipulate us is what they did. Oh, they totally did. Yeah. It was criminally manipulating us out of our homes and uh, against our uh, family's moral values is what it was. Uh -huh. And so that was a, that was a crime against humanity and it was a crime against our parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, taking away their authority and imposing like society's, um, Judge you know, judgments and belief systems. Right. Right. That's why we are different parents because we know we don't want that to come between us and our kids. Uh -huh. We did everything or we worked harder not to do that. And I mean, some of us of our generation, I think believe that their parents just didn't love them enough or care about them enough or whatever. And while the rest of, of, of us were like, wow, look at what they did to divide us from our parents. And I know my relationship with my mom is jacked up because I was a teenager and I fell for that. So now I have to parent myself. I can't blame her. I need to be responsible for that. And I'm, but I'm, and I'm sad because it ruined my relationship with my mom Aww. in the way that I would have liked for it to be. I think many of us feel that way, you know, and, and then some of us have been able to remediate that, mm -hmm. heal it. And then others of us may not have been able to, because some of our parents might not have been so easy to, 
be able to receive that, right? Right. That yeah. was good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we carry all of that kind of stuff with us to the assembly, all of those life experiences and all of the ways that we've been led down a, a, a different path that is not the American way of doing things. We have to go back to like what it was like in the past. And thankfully the, um, the Federation had enough sense to deal with issues that are abhorrent. For example, the slavery issue mm. that's already been dealt with. Okay. So when I'm talking about going back in time, I'm not talking about those institutions that are inherently not okay. Okay. <laughs> um, also, in 1776, women didn't have the, the right to participate, right? We didn't have the right to engage in our government. In North Carolina, uh -huh. in the 80s, women could not own real estate. In how long? In the 80s. When our parents were getting all divorced, women uh -huh. could not own real estate, which is the reason why all these moms were in apartments. They never owned homes. Wow. Not unless the dad left her the house, you know, like in the divorce. Women could not own homes. My daddy's name was on my mom's mortgage until she sold that house. And she didn't dare sell that house until she was able to own property, which was post the 80s. That's wild. So that's like 40, you know, ish years ago. And um, not that long ago. That's very recent history. <laughs> very ridiculous. My mother was a realtor. She could sell real estate. She could mm -hmm. not sell real estate. Wow. That makes no sense to me. Wow. By the way, I just need to give us a little five, my little five minute warning just went on for my next appointment. So yeah. just want to give us that heads up. We'll have to do this again too, though, by the way, because yeah, we'll I con we'll continue this. Um, we just, um, with your permission, I'd love to do this. I'd love to go ahead and try to schedule this again. I think this is a, I think this, I mean, are you okay with sharing this with everybody? Because I feel like a lot of people can learn from this conversation. Yeah. I love, you know, anyone who's interested in learning more or, uh, open to, you know, Hey friends, if you guys want to know what's on the test, then I'm trying to find out from Michelle Ford, what's on that test? There's two more questions I wanna ask before we wrap, if it's okay. I sure. just want quick answers, cause I'm sure there are elaborate answers for this. Okay. But what one, is the meaning of life? Yeah, we don't have enough time for that. No. <laughs> okay, one question that I have. Anna is going to, when, when a state is ready to be seated, then Anna has to come and she's going to audit all the parts and pieces of the assembly. And so we have to have been operating or are, are we supposed to have been operational to some level already? Like, or are we just going to get some kind of test? What's the pressure test to know? <laughs> You know, like, what is that pressure test? And maybe you can't answer this right now, but she does. No, I, I can answer it. Oh, the, okay. the, the, the pressure test is, is it working or not? If it's not working, then you're not ready. If it is working, then you've got to be able to demonstrate it working. Oh, fix That's any, good. you know, fix any drafty windows, fix any things that come along the way, hopefully before the whole thing implodes. Okay. Oh, um, inspection. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Walk Someone that's going to be able to like check everything out and go, wow, this is a well-oiled machine. They've got their pillars stood. They've got a functional court. They're ready to hear cases. They've got an election process. They've got a recall process. They've got an, a resignation process. Mm. They've got an education process. They've got an, uh, you know, um, oversight and uh, new member orientation and you know, they've got happy people and they've got a, a place for people to go that aren't happy and a process to help them through their, why are they, well, usually the source of their unhappiness is a lack of comprehending the jurisdictions and who's supposed to do what and when and why and how and where and et cetera, et cetera. So that's really the long and short of it is 
when Anna can see that you can demonstrate a well-oiled machine, just that anyone else can plug into that particular job and it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. That's when you'll know you've got a functional government. Okay. And then B, is it true, true or false? If you don't pass the pressure test and unless and until you pass the pressure test, mm -hmm. you do not get your funding or bank training. Yeah, I don't believe so. I don't believe that they're going to entrust us with the, you know, billions or trillions of dollars for public use right. if we can't even demonstrate that we comprehend our public duty. Okay. <laughs> you can't have a, you can, and, and by the way, do not allow yourself, if you get to the point of elections, okay, uh -huh. do not allow, um, don't let anyone uh, even consider that they should run for office. Mm -hmm. unless they can demonstrate competency related to the knowledge aspect of what we have to get done for that position. Right. Yep. They've got to have competency. And I don't mean competency as in they're running around being a bunch of dummies. That's not what I mean. There's so many smart people who haven't studied any of Anna's work. For example, and, or they're still corporate minded they don't, uh, they're just very de facto and not uh, following the whole de jure process. Correct. Or they're, you know, they're operating under the laws of war, not a, not under the laws of peace. They want to fight, name call, bear false witness, backbite, do politics, propaganda, just you trouble. Have to walk in love. We, we walk yeah. in love. We are peaceful people. Yeah. We are, you know, honorable. Yeah. And love, you know, by definition is patient and kind. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, and it's not arrogant or proud. That's what love is. So people have a bunch of different definitions of what love is. There's not a bunch of definitions for what love is. That's right. There's that's not very... it's just the truth. And this comes, and that's what I, I mean. Everything comes back to the truth. Love us or hate us. We don't care because the truth is the truth. That's right. Yeah. All right. I love you. Thank you. Thank so you, Neethi. I appreciate you reaching out and giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. And I love you too. I, you you don't understand how powerful this will be. And I look very forward to being able to do this with you again, because our, our assemblies need this so badly. They need it so badly. So thank you for your grace and for your real love. And allowing all of it, because someone said, she's not going to want to tell you what she's doing. And I said, you know, I just don't believe that. And if she's happy to talk about it. Yeah. I was like, if she doesn't want to talk to me. That's fine. You know, I just don't understand why any of us would be doing this if we're not willing to help everybody get stood up where this is not a game or a competition or a race. If we don't all get, we need, we need everybody up to go into you know, congressional, congressional committees and do the big work. Like we want to do the big work. And well, we there's big work, you know, but that's just a different jurisdiction. Really? The work is like local. The, the big work is right there on your be, county. I, I just mean that is, that is actually restoring all of the United States. Right. Yeah. That just, we need to restore the Confederation and restore the Federal Republic. So definitely needs to get done. Yeah, we could talk about that next time too. Next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neethi. Have an awesome rest of your day. And you know, if you send me the playback, I'll get it up on